Hello everybody, Blue Dooley, and we're back on 53 hauler working on it some more. And in this video we're going to get the motor installed. I still haven't found a place where I'm going to mount the ESC yet. We're going to talk about some body modifications. Uh, I got my other stack worked on. I did get all of the chrome off of the other body and it is currently stripping. But uh, before we get to all of that, we're going to grab the grill here. And find some good light, maybe. But this is Tamiya Gun Metal. It is TS38. I put a couple coats of just a white base coat. Uh, what's that one? TS26, pure white. So pure white base coat after stripping the chrome. Uh, several coats of the gun metal and then two really good coats of uh, TS13, which is just a clear. And uh, I don't know how well this is going to show up in the garage. But, uh, yeah, I am absolutely loving the look of that grill and gun metal. I got my 3D printed part out for my wheel lift. The bracket is already built into it for the linear actuator. I think I'm going to make it a little thicker just to make it a little stronger. I didn't actually measure how wide this was when I made this. I actually just measured this piece. So, I can make it a little thicker on the uh, side all the way around. That would probably make it a lot sturdier. Right now, I'm going to turn you off and I'm going to cut this out and notch it. As we're going to use some key stock for my cross beam. And then I picked up some brass tubing. And this stuff, after I notch it out... We'll flip over, or we'll slip over the keystock, and I'll put some holes in the keystock and this to kind of pin it. And then uh, I'll have to make two pieces, and these will be the arms that I'll then come off of 90 again for the wheel lift. So let me go ahead and get this cut out, and uh, then we'll come back after I get it notched. So this is quarter inch key stock that I've been using on a few projects. I notched out the tubing. That way this will actually have some, be able to turn. And uh, then again, I got the brass tube, which will be notched so it can slide up and down here. The widest crawler I have is my HPI Venture with some Vanquish wheels and RC four-wheel drive mud slingers, and it's nine and a half inches wide. So I cut this at nine and a half. Uh, the bed itself is about ten and a half wide, I think. I guess we can get a tape measure and remeasure it. Oh. It's about. 10 and 3 quarter from outside to outside. So I wanted the tow bar to be narrower than the bed just so it tucks up a little nicer. So I need to find the center of that, drill it, and then uh, this will be kind of done. The basic layout will be done. I'm not sure how many holes I'll have to drill in it to adjust for uh, vehicle width. Because I suppose it depends on how long I make the other part of this. Uh, and it'll either be flipped and angled in. Or it'll be out like this with this piece in to uh, adjust for width. That should give me the widest option of pulling rigs. But I'm really only going to pull mine. So I just really need it to fit my rigs. But I'm going to drill this off uh, camera. We're going to jump in to the motor and the speed controller. 
and then we'll get into some body stuff. Working on the transmission and the motor for the hauler at the desk today. The motor is an easy run 3652 G3. It is a 3300 kV censored motor. I had went with a bigger canned motor, but the mo the 550 can motor in this uh, kind of series is actually just a hair too long to fit in the truck and it had a five millimeter output shaft so we went with the little smaller motor so we can get the right input shaft and it'll fit in the truck the uh, stock plastic gears are on the right steel gears on the left as i suspected this the 53 hauler is using the uh, gen 7 transmission So you will need part number 13859 from Red Cat, and that will enable you to put metal gears, steel gears, in the 53 hauler. Like I said, probably overkill, but since I kind of want to throw some power to it and maybe do some burnouts with the truck, uh, we're going to go ahead and put steel gears in the transmission. The axle has steel gears in it. The bearing, de uh, the transmission does have full sealed ball bearings in it. The outdrive for the transmission is a pretty stout unit. And uh, the input shaft for the transmission is actually a pretty good stout unit too. So the steel gears did come with their new pin. Uh, you just reuse the pin for the output and Put her back together. I'm going to put the stock pinion on it. I do want to mention when you're taking the transmission apart, these steel collars are separate pieces. And there is a little steel collar spacer between the back of the spur gear mount and this bearing in the transmission. So you definitely want to keep that, uh, keep track of that because it probably helps keep the spur gear correctly in place with the pinion and probably keeps that bearing from walking itself out. Got the motor and the pinion on the transmission again. Everything spins nice and smooth. I clocked the wires so they go out uh, towards the passenger side of the truck because the motor actually, that's the front of the truck. So towards the rear. I'll flip you around here so we can see that. The back out or the front output actually has a little cap that covers it that uh, just bolts to the bottom of the transmission when you put the transmission in. Keeps gunk out of that bearing. And then in the truck, the speed controller, the radio and everything sits on that plate above the top of the transmission. So I just ran the wires so they'd come out and we could just loop, make a big loop, plug them right into the ESC. But everything spins smoothly. The Mesh, I actually do still use paper. I don't, uh, you can see the wrinkles there from where I ran it through there. I just don't mess enough with it, uh, to do it by feel or just eyeball it. So I just always use a piece of paper in there to set the pinion mesh. So now we can get this back in the truck and, uh, actually start putting the truck back together. I think I am just going to leave this plastic for now. That way, if I do break anything, I'll tear up this plastic spur gear and I won't tear up expensive gears. So the drive shafts are nice and thick and uh, they're, they're a little bit of play in the uh, joints, but nothing too terrible. This is a real simple three gear transmission. So pretty much if you worked on any three gear transmission, you, you can work on this one. So we're going to get it back in the truck. The 550 can isn't that much bigger than the other can. In fact, by the time you figure that's cooling fan, the amount of magnet in them is probably about the same. It was a 42 turn, not a uh, 55, like I thought it was. And here again is that little cap for uh, the one side of the transmission. You can see here there's a little indentation where that'll fit in there. And it'll cover up 
It'll cover up this bearing and output shaft just to kind of keep the junk out of it. Now, it has a little bit of a gear cover built into this uh, electronics tray, but the truck's not really, I wouldn't say it's really good for off-roading, especially since all these heavy duty plastic parts can just pretty much fill up with dirt. But we're gonna get the transmission installed and I gotta pull the receiver off and I might have to rearrange how I have my electronics underneath uh, the truck, but uh, let's get the motor and that cover mounted and the drive shaft back together. So here's the center part of the drive shaft. We'll get that in there. And then uh, the four little holes where the transmission goes, the four outer holes are where that uh, top plate goes in at. Like I said, the uh, drive shaft plastic in this thing's pretty stout, so I'm not too concerned with uh, accidentally stripping those, that's for sure. If that was the long enough one or not. Nope. Yeah, boy. That one just barely sticks through. Uh, let me find my screws. There we go. There's longer ones. That's what we needed. I don't tend to use a lot of power tools. That's just how because I usually end up stripping something if I use power tools, so that's just me. You do what you want to do. There's that. Let's see here. We gotta unstick the receiver. There's that Max. Uh, ESC takes up quite a bit of room. Let me get all the gunk off of that and uh, we'll come back. Got the sensor wire plugged in and tucked out of the way for now. And the wires are actually just about the perfect length to run them that way. And it'll leave us just a tiny bit of space for the receiver as uh, it does need a bit more real estate than the Hexfly unit. The only downside I see is this cable 
isn't going to be long enough. But uh, we'll have to make an extension for this, which shouldn't be too hard. And uh, probably wire the uh, winch power leads into this. And then there's enough enough room here we can actually I can probably even drill a hole through there and uh, zip tie those wires out of the way Let's stick you there for now being weird with the uh, way I got the receiver hanging out that one side. Not sure how well you can see in there, but the seat, the seat should be up high enough. We should, uh, should still get good airflow for the ESC. I might, uh, Cut some of the uh, seat out in the front where you can't see it, and maybe out in the back, get a little better airflow through it. But uh, yeah, it fits down there snug. So if I got to do a little trimming for wires, that ain't too bad. Or I suppose actually, we could could stretch them out and put it on one of the servos. figure something out the speakers actually sit up here in front of the cab in front of all the suspension and stuff so if I need to move stuff around or make a bigger plate it uh, won't be too hard to figure it out it almost if it wasn't quite so tall Or wide, it almost fit there. So that'll take a little bit of finagling, but I want to be able to get the SD card out of uh, the USM RC3 so I can program it. Now, when I initially did the lights, I left the cable really long, and I have another cable. So, what I'm going to do is one through eight will probably be either the cab only or the rear or the truck only and then nine through 16 will be the other one so that way i have plenty of plenty of ribbon to easily reach back to the center of the truck run all of the lights on the back of the truck off of one ribbon cable and then if i do need to take the cab off i can just unplug its lights and the speaker and the cab will come straight off to make working on it or tuning it a little better. I do not have a program card or the Bluetooth module for the easy run. Um, probably just going to ask in the uh, local crawler club if anybody has one that will work for it and then just program it and then give them back their card because I can't imagine changing the settings on the speed controller itself much on the truck. Most of the changes are going to be with the sound and the light kit. <clears throat> also, the Spectrum 5 channel. Well, 5 channels isn't enough. So I'm going to get a Fly Sky Noble ordered, a 8 channel radio, because the lift, uh, the wheel lift will need 2 channels. So that brings me up to 7 channels. And that leaves me the 8th channel to uh, maybe run different light functions. As right now, uh, all the lights are ran off of one channel. It just depends on how you flip the switch and how long you hold it in position. Uh, quick taps up or down, do the turn signals. Long down, turns a set of lights on. You click it again long, it turns the next set on, click it again. 
turns the light bar on. So <clears throat> that eighth channel, I'll probably be able to put the uh, light bar on one side of the switch and then I can put uh, the lights I'm gonna put in the toolboxes and work lights on the other side of the switch. Just a simple on off. <clears throat> Or I might leave the light bar on with the headlights and the running lights. And that leaves me another channel that I can do the work lights, underglow, uh, more sounds. So, But we need to get more parts in uh, solution to strip the uh, chrome. And this part I'm filming on Tuesday my hot racing 10th scale aluminum silver diamond plate showed up unfortunately it got a little crinkled in the mail because my postman's kind of an ass but uh, I got enough sheets to do the full length diamond plate it's not gonna stay aluminum we're gonna paint the diamond plate but uh, I think that'll look a little nicer for what kind of truck I'm going for is uh, the diamond plate will be painted the same color as the cab. All the chrome will be gunmetal. So these top two or four holes are what hold the top part of the cab to the bottom part of the cab, which is the top Chevy emblem. And then chrome piece of trim. I ended up cutting these off so I could get the cab apart, so I could get to the rest of the chrome. And I gotta say, uh, Red Cat's warranty department, they're pretty solid. Because I told them that I had seven screws on this grill. Let's actually get the grill. So... One here, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Just, they were so tight. As soon as you tried to bust them loose, uh, they just instantly stripped. So I sent them an email. They said file a warranty claim. So that's what I did. And they got, they were gonna send me a whole new cab. And I said, I don't need the whole cab. I just need the grill and the chrome. So uh, I'll have to put in the, subtitles here the uh, guy's name that i talked to at red cat but they already have uh the pieces i need coming so that's pretty sweet i gotta tell you what man they uh they are not the same company they used to be they got real nice plastics they got really good support so the visor is held on uh, by pins. So it's got three pins and then two uh, these white ones, actually three, three white little uh, sleeves, press fit on, hold that in place. So that's kind of that's kind of an interesting mounting look uh, way. Uh, not super sturdy or anything, but uh, it definitely makes the parts look nice and uh, is really hard to see those with uh, the cab all put together. Now all the other trim pieces are uh, have a rubber o-ring and then just a little kind of press washer or locking ring with three little tabs that kind of dig into the plastic they just push on and these little guys are kind of a pain in the ass to get taken out but uh we're taking the hood hinges off the door handles off and then the wiper blades of this cab so yeah these two these two hinges the wipers and then all the door handles the mirrors are going to stay on 
because the other cab, the clear cab I have that I'm going to paint, I'm going to put a different style of mirror on the truck entirely. Uh, these little mirrors, actually, if you were driving the truck, probably couldn't see past the stack in the bed. <laughs> so, uh, I think I got some brazing rod about this thickness. So I'm going to do West Coast style, or what's called a West Coast style mirror. And uh, 3D print up an actual little bit larger mirror. And uh, then I'll probably carve or print a little block to uh, stick the wire in and then bolt it to the cab. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but uh, we are, we're going to come out a little, then up back to the cab. There might actually be like a little Y brace up at the top of the cab. Just kind of depends on uh, looks and how secure it is. And I'm looking at the rest of the cab. I'd like to put some air horns on it. Uh, I'm going to do a different style, style visor. And then, uh, not sure if I'm going to do two uh, antennas on the mirrors for like a CB radio or not. But uh, I am going to... We got, the, we got the factory dash, which is pretty easier to easier to look at. So the factory dash does have gauges and uh, then just this kind of chrome tape with Chevrolet on it. Uh, basic three spoke steering wheel. So I'm going to, now that I got this out of the cab, I think I'm going to mount a radio to this on the dash and uh, might make some other accessories or things to put on the dash. The other thing I'm thinking of is I do have a new sticker sheet, so I might, on the new dash I have, drill these out almost completely and then put some clear Lexan, put the stickers on clear Lexan and then glue that to uh, this plastic piece so then I can put an LED behind them and uh, light up the gauges. I think that would look really sweet. Uh, we'll probably, we got to paint the dash anyways. And I'll probably paint the steering wheel. Or maybe... I might see if the wife has any blue fabric. And maybe we'll try to like, make a cover. And then maybe paint the spokes gunmetal. And then uh, color match the rest of it. Not really sure uh, what direction we're going to go with the new dash, but the new dash is black. The one I got. So it's just this flat black color, the whole thing. Just a single screw holds it to the dash, and then a little set screw holds the steering wheel in place. So a uh, very simple dash. I might... Like I said, it depends on how easy it is to see in the cab how much detail I'm going to put on it, but uh, stuff on top of the dash you'd be able to easily see through the windshield. But that's the direction we're going to go. Uh, they do have lots of mold lines in these cabs if you haven't had a good look at these. Uh, Red Cat's really doing a good job with these multi-piece multi Lexan bodies. Oops. I accidentally started playing the video again. So, yeah, I need to get those two off, and then these off. But, uh, I really wish Red Cat would come out with some paint, because uh, this blue and that red on uh, the Red 53, those are gorgeous colors. It's, uh, it would be nice if you could color match the rest of the truck, or the cars. Especially if you're like me and not a big fan of chrome. Uh... And color match these uh, hood hinges, the hardware, maybe the mirrors. That's that's kind of my taste, but kind of just monochrome the whole thing. That'd look pretty sweet in my book. Just because, well, I'm not just a big fan of chrome. So, 
there are three holes in the cab for that uh, visor, but we're going to go with a little bit smaller, a little bit meaner looking visor. And I don't know how I would do it, but I had thought about maybe putting a searchlight in the center of the cab, like the old style uh, police lights that it have a handle down here in the cab that you might not be able to see, but uh, then you could just reach up from the dash and aim it. That might be kind of cool. I don't know. We're still working on a few things, but uh, that's kind of where the cab's at right now. I just need to get the rest of the chrome off so I can get it painted. The other thing, I guess well, since we're here, uh, Red Cat, whatever glue you guys are using on your tires, man, that stuff... The uh, chrome's damaged because I heated it up with a heat gun trying to get the glue to melt. The uh, plastic started getting soft before the glue melted. I have some Uncure that I've been trying. I brought a brand new bottle of it. And yeah, this, uh, this stuff isn't touching this glue at all. I, I don't know how I got that other one apart, but man, their, uh, their tire glue is pretty stout stuff so let me get uh this stripped and then we'll get on to the next thing i should also mention i switched from the salt and vinegar mix to la's totally awesome all-purpose concentrated cleaner uh i found this at the dollar store but uh one of the first videos i saw on youtube for stripping paint was a model guy and he used this stuff and the wheel and some of the little trim pieces have only been in here maybe two, three hours at most. And they're pretty much stripped. The bumper, however, <laughs> I don't know how Red Cat chrome plated the black bumper, but uh, that stuff's been in there for two days now. And it's almost completely got it all, but I almost think how fast the chrome strips off the parts depends more on what type of plastic it was coated over because the black plastic seems to be harder to strip than the white plastic like i said I, these haven't been in here hardly at all and they're all completely clean so now i need to figure out how to hold all those little plastic parts so i can paint them but uh if you're wondering on just a purchase to uh, strip chrome la is totally awesome cleaner uh seems to work pretty good and I got two jugs this size for only like $2.65 at uh, Dollar Tree. So unless you're doing huge parts like bumpers, uh, it's not a bad deal. <laughs> 